Hey everyone, so today I want to do a more personal video to kind of let you guys know a little bit about my journey and how I got started. I get a lot of questions and I really wanted to help anyone who's starting to try to start out a blog or starting out as a personality or even starting a beauty brand. I really want to kind of give you guys insight into how I did it. So we'll start a little bit more personal. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm actually a Southern girl. <laughs> I grew up in Tennessee in the United States. So um, that's kind of like the longest place I've ever lived. That is like true to the DNA of who I am. Me and my family we spent um, 12 and a half years there so you know we have a lot of those mannerisms from the south we can be sometimes over the top with our sorries our thank yous our pleases but that's just kind of who we are I kind of moved all over the states after that I moved to Mass where I met my husband and then I moved to Michigan where I studied and, and then I ended up moving to Dubai um, in between there and kind of coming back and forth but officially moving back in 2008 um, and Dubai is now what I call home I ended up studying finance and it really wasn't the right career for me. Um, I really honestly did not like it at all. But by the time I kind of realized I didn't like it, it was too far. I had gone too far. I would have spent way longer in university than I would have wanted to. So I loved business and I ended up somehow getting convinced by Mona that finance was the answer because I love math and I love statistics. I loved all those nerdy like mathematical things. I ended up doing finance, hated it, and then ended up very quickly saying, okay, you know what? Screw this. I'm not going to actually work in finance. I'll work for a little while and then I'll end up doing my MBA and do something with the business and somehow having a business background was actually perfect. I ended up actually working in financial recruitment and really just found it very miserable. <laughs> For me, it just was not the right fit. I just realized that I was such a passionate person and I was doing something that I didn't even love passionately. I kind of just realized that there was no way I was going to do anything unless I loved it. I struggled so much. I was like, what do I want to do with my life? I was sitting down having dinner with my family and my sister Mona was like, go study makeup. And my parents were like, yeah, you should go do that. And I was like, what? So I literally got up, went upstairs, booked my ticket to LA, found a school, Joe Blasco, studied makeup. My biggest supporter was definitely the women in my life. My mom, my sisters, they were very supportive. But it became challenging sometimes too because I became a mom and at the time that was probably one of the hardest things. It was very unexpected, I wasn't ready. And uh, it was a struggle because I, I had like this goal in my mind and what I wanted to do. And then all of a sudden I was not able to do those things and had a baby on my boob. <laughs> and I was trying to, you know, blog in one arm and, and falling asleep all like doing the same time. It was one of the hardest times of my life. My biggest inspiration has always been Oprah. I love her. And I just like that she fights through all difficulties. Like there's just no way anything is gonna stop her. And that's really kind of endearing and, and, and nice to hear when you're, you know, you're facing difficulties. I think it's always nice to hear people have had challenges and they just didn't let them stop them. So I've always loved Oprah. She's an inspiring one. My first makeup memory, my first product that I ever really loved, this is going to sound so weird, but being such a hairy person, of course I love tweezers. I mean, um, <laughs> my favorite product was actually a tweezers from Revlon tweezers. They were really awesome. They were super sharp. Later on, I kind of, you know, graduated. I um, got into more luxurious products. So I started using Tweezer Man, but definitely started with like those super basic drugstore Revlon 399 tweezers at the time. Get rid of my unibrow. <laughs> And my mustache, let's be honest. <laughs> I go tea. <laughs> Although I didn't know that makeup could really actually be a career for me, I was obsessed with it. Um, by the time I was 14, I started doing my sister's brows. She was 11 years older than me. I was doing all her friends' brows. So um, they were in college and I was like in junior high. You know, I just got really into makeup. I just kind of was fascinated with the idea that I could literally transform into somebody else with one small technique. And I love that. And I think um, growing up, I always felt like I was like an ugly duckling surrounded by beautiful swans. And I just kind of was like, you know what? Like, I, I think it's cool. I think it's like kind of fun how you can just like change, you know, certain aspects, the way you look Look, tweak it a little bit, have a little fun with it, and then also feel more beautiful, which is like, of course the most important part. You know, I've always loved makeup. Even when I was working in other careers, I used to like go leave work and like go do my friend's makeup for free. I would do all the fashion shows in my high school and do the makeup there, um, do the fashion shows in my university. Like I would just do anything, drop anything to do anybody's makeup for free. So a little bit after I started doing makeup, when I came back from makeup school, I kind of wasn't sure how to get people to find me. So my sister was like, you should start a blog. You like not only know makeup, but you know so much about beauty, you know so much about the chemistry in our hair and all those things. So I was like, you know what, let me do that. So um, I started blogging and it was kind of like my way to like put out information too. So I actually had the craziest schedule. So I would wake up at like five in the morning. I would go do makeup at like six. I would come home at like four or five. I would do all my blog posts for the entire day and I would just schedule them out. And then I would like go to an event so I could be like a personality. <laughs> and then I would like come home, go to bed and do the same thing every single day. I remember there was a time it was like two months I didn't have like any days off and I loved it. You know, it was a lot of work and it was 
was a lot of round the clock exhaustion. I felt like I was also doing kind of like living my dream, doing what I wanted to do. So yeah, it was a really great thing that I actually did that because I feel like so many people actually found me and found out who I was by doing that. And then later on I got to Facebook and YouTube and all that fun social media and that kind of like, you know, took off. One of the great things about having a blog too was exposure to a lot of brands and also a lot of amazing people. There were some amazing, amazing princesses that reached out to me and they were awesome and they asked me to do their makeup. And I remember at the time I was like super big and pregnant, but I made an exception of course and for her. <laughs> um, and I did her makeup and then I ended up doing all of her sister's makeup for her, their weddings. And they're the only people I've made exceptions for because they're so awesome and so sweet. But it was like kind of intimidating and exciting. You know, it was my first time going into like a major palace and I remember just driving through and there was like literally butterflies everywhere. And I was like, how does this happen? <laughs> It was just so beautiful and it was honestly like a royal experience. I was so classy. And then later on I ended up getting into doing celebrities. One of my favorite celebrities of all time. Done so many awesome ones but Eva Longoria I think because she represents so much of what I believe women should be. She is just such an amazing, incredible, intelligent woman. She was just like a boss in every sense of the term. I definitely had a lot of struggles as I started too. It wasn't all peachy and perfect all the time. One of the hardest things for me was definitely financially it was tough. I did not make a lot of money. I was not one of those bloggers who monetized properly. Still to this day I'm, I'm not someone who does a lot of paid posts. I felt like for me, it just didn't fit. Sometimes do some sponsor things if they're brands that I love and I love the products, we do them. But that's always been the case from the beginning till now. So I never made a lot. And that was really difficult for me in the beginning. It was so hard. The first three years I struggled. Finally, at the end of the three years, I was got to a point where I was able to afford an assistant. Um, I was making about $1,500 a month, which is not a lot of money. And I was basically taking all the money I was making and paying her out. Um, that was one reason why I got back into makeup artistry so I could make money and you know eventually start my brand. My sister was also an investor. <laughs> um, you know, she invested like $6,000 and I had worked makeup to uh, to start the brand. One of the other struggles I, I had starting out was definitely cyberbullying. I had two incidents where I was pretty badly cyberbullied and it made it very difficult for me to work. You know, they, both of the, the times were around three to four months of just hardcore bullying. I'll do a separate video if you guys want to see on how I dealt with that, but ultimately it did actually make me very strong. So in retrospect, I'm happy that, that those situations happened to me because now I don't care what people say. People say awful things and I'm like, oh honey, I've heard a lot worse. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it was probably a blessing in disguise. When I started HoodieBeauty.com, it was kind of funny. Actually, I first named it the Beauty 411 and nobody got it. Everybody was like, oh, hey, Beauty 911. <laughs> and I was like, but no, it's 411. And, and 411 in the States is like, hello, like information. <laughs> nobody got that. So I had to change the name. We ended up calling it Huda Beauty. I, I wanted people to know it was me behind it. So I named it Huda Beauty. Um, that was like the purpose behind me actually calling it Huda Beauty. It's funny because now I see like, you know, people are always asking me like, why did you use your name? And I was like, I want people to know it's me. I want people to know who Huda is. So that was the reason why. I actually called it HuddaBeauty.com. And my family was super supportive. It was funny, like they were the only people commenting in the beginning. <laughs> they were like the biggest cheerleaders. My husband used to always tell me like stories about like blogs like taking off and one day becoming something. And I felt like that was something that I always kind of like aspired for because of those reasons. But it was also tough with them. They were supportive and also sometimes like, you're always blogging, you always have to go home to blog. <laughs> and why are you always doing this? Like vacations are no more fun. But I took it really seriously and it was really important to me. So eventually, I mean, now they get it, but it was <laughs> definitely annoying through the process for them. I definitely came from humble beginnings. My dad was really concerned about me starting as a blogger. Um, he definitely didn't think that this could like skyrocket into something that could take off and support me and eventually my family. And I always told him it would, but he was just being a dad and he was just trying to be like protective over me and wanted to keep things in perspective. But for me, it was like, you know, no dad, this is gonna happen. One day people are gonna see it. He was great, which made me a little bit have to like be a little bit more organized and a little bit tougher. I think fighting him <laughs> and through the process made it a little bit more organized, a little bit more structured because I had to make it like really seriously, like something big and real. But it was definitely challenging, you know, and that happens sometimes. Sometimes not all your family members and your friends will support you. I definitely had some friends who also, when I started, were just kind of like, what's going on? What are you doing? And, you know, eventually they got it, but it, it took years. The difficult thing with blogging is you just don't really know when it's going to take off. And I was blogging for about 12 months before I actually saw really anything happen. I actually remember it was almost 12 months. It was like 11 and a half months. And I saw a girl from Japan. She left a comment on my blog and I was just like, oh my gosh, it's happening. People from around the world are, are commenting. It's it's happening. It was only one girl. It was like a catalyst. It's happening. Like this is like what you need to like keep pushing through. And then I, you know, slowly start to see people from like Oman and like Africa and America and South America. So that was kind of reassuring. And it kind of let me know that what I was doing was resonating with some people. I definitely took time. And I think for every blogger out there, it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience.
So when we finally decided to do lashes, it was kind of something I really didn't want to do. I was like, no, but I just loved creating things. And so I used to create lashes and I used to shave them and like do all, like cut them and do all these weird things. And then like I, I would wear them and people would be like, what are you doing? And I would just like want to give them to everyone. And Mona was like, oh my gosh, you could totally create a business out of this. Like we should do something with it. And I was like, no, I was like that just sounds like not like, it's not who I am. Like that's not what I want to do. And she's like, no, let's do it. And so she ended up like kind of forcing me into it, found manufacturers for it. And she showed me the sample and I was like, that's actually clear what I want to create. You know, I didn't really have any money at the time. So I started doing makeup to, to pay for it. And then I still needed some money. So Olya ended up investing. She was my first investor. And I was like, look, I need some money. I need to buy some lashes. I need to buy a shitload of lashes. <laughs> and if I can't actually pay you back for them, like if we don't actually make money off of them, I'll just wear them and then give you the money back. <laughs> so for me, it was like no fail. There was like no way we were going to like not succeed because I was going to wear them if anything. And then we ended up getting organized and finding a way to actually package them. And it's kind of funny because people don't know that I was involved in every, not every single aspect, I owned every single aspect of creating Huda Beauty. So, you know, when it came down to the, the package of the box, I was like, I want my eyes on it. I want people to see it. I want people to like recognize it. I literally went into my room one day, put makeup on and I was like, let me just take a picture. I took the picture. Um, I went to a place where they were like designers and I was like, sat down with them for the day and I was like, I want to create a package out of this. We messed around with fonts, we messed around with design, we messed around with the colors and then we ended up creating the lash box. It took me quite a long time to actually get like the right aesthetic, but we did. Yeah, the rest is kind of history from there. So when we did launch the lashes, I knew that I wanted to be in Sephora. That was like to me the goal. I wanted to be in Sephora and Dubai Mall. That was like very specific to me. And um, so we contacted a couple of distributors in, in the region and most of them were just kind of like, no, 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 somebody else is gonna come out with lashes. They're a bigger makeup artist or no, you're, this is not a really interesting product. So it was a little bit of a struggle because I was like, oh my God, people just don't see like my dream and, and they don't they can't see into reality. Finally, we ended up coming across a distributor who was helpful in the beginning. They were very helpful. And we somehow made this launch happen, but I was really tough. Like, I was very tough about the whole process. Like I was like, this is gonna be done the way I want it to be done. Otherwise it's not gonna happen. And we almost pulled out two weeks before the launch over like small details, but I was like, no, it has to be exactly what's in my head or this is not happening. So we figured out all the details and um, we were able to actually launch in Sephora Dubai Mall and overnight, <laughs> um, not really overnight. I feel like it was like a long time in the process, but kind of overnight, um, it became you know, one of the most purchased products in Sephora Middle East. And uh, since then we've broken those records, <laughs> but it was really, really exciting at the time. I kept telling everybody that we were gonna sell a lot of lashes, but people didn't, I don't think they really took into consideration meant about it. So I remember in the morning I got a phone call, hey, the lashes are on sale. There's already a lot of people coming, like people are excited. I rushed to Dubai Mall and I basically stayed in Dubai Mall the whole entire day. I was super emotional. I think even now to this day with any launch that we have, whenever I see everyone's reaction, I cry. I'm not a crier and like literally the floodgates just <laughs> flow. And I get really emotional about it because it's so great to see when you create a product, people react in a way that you only hope they do. You know, this whole time I get emotional even putting things out on Snapchat whenever we do anything. I get so nervous about it um, because we really do put our heart and soul on every product. So it's not an easy process. You know, it, you go through so much emotion. Like you get so excited about it when you create it. And then afterwards you're like, oh my God, what if nobody likes it? What if all this excitement is just, you know, something that I just completely like made and out of my brain. And you get really, really nervous um, through this whole process. And I, and I felt it the first day. I still feel it every single time we do a product, um, but it's always rewarding when everyone loves it. You know, there's so many different stories that I can really tell you as I got started, but ultimately it was really about just kind of like prevailing. Um, one of the things Mona said to me when she first started working with me, she was like, you know, I've learned a lot from you. One of the things I learned is that although you're a very impatient person, when it comes to work, you know, you're very patient and you're very steadfast and you constantly push through no matter what the circumstances are. And I think it's really, when it comes to doing anything, you just kind of have to like have that goal that ultimately it will be achieved as long as you just persevere and you you put all the right things in play. So it's really, really important. As a brand, you should always maintain your professionalism you know hold true to your word you know be passionate definitely but just try to maintain your composure whenever you can really want to give you guys kind of a glimpse into how I've how I've done everything not that I have the oracle or I have the mission but I've definitely pushed through some of the hardest um, situations in my life and in sometimes even hard situations as a woman who's you know trying to be taken seriously as a businesswoman also as a woman who's you know going into a venture that is not socially acceptable so I've definitely been there in some situations to kind of help give you guys my guidance of my information and you guys find it helpful you guys are more than welcome to take it let me know whatever questions you guys have down below ask me as many questions as you want and i'll try to i'll do my best to answer them and uh and we'll see you guys in our next videos